Back in the early 90s when the Soviet Union collapsed, I was authoring guidebooks. And Cuba had just begun to turn to tourism to save its economy. I flew to Havana and had my first month in Havana. And it was such a surreal moment in time and a, such a surreal place. I think it was the first time that I'd ever felt traveling that I had stepped inside a romantic novel. One in four cars in Cuba, passenger cars, is pre-revolution. We went to dinner in a three or four vintage American vehicles. I went in a purple convertible. It's absolutely de rigueur for any visitor to take a ride in a convertible, classic American car. People on the street in Havana are extremely welcoming. The one thing perhaps above all that Americans would be surprised by, your average American arriving there, is the warm welcome that they receive as Americans, because there's been a portrayal of this dour communist nation. It's a Caribbean communist nation with a smile on the face. Well, I heard music uh, just about everywhere. Uh, we would hear music uh, as we walked by. Uh, and in particular, there was a group of, uh, I believe, three septuagenarians sitting uh, at a street corner, very near the hotel that Hemingway stayed at. In every restaurant, there, there's little groups and bands. Uh, that is what Cuba has really done right. It was a happy place, and there was a lot of music. I would definitely want to go back. I would go back. Um, just to see the country without the restrictions I experienced. I would see more of the country. When the embargo is lifted, I plan to return and certainly travel around the rest of the island. See it now whilst it exists as it is, as we kind of want it to be in terms of a touristic experience. The Hollywood stage set, how long it's going to be there, who knows? Probably not that much longer. 